most often we don't appreciate or value the things that we receive for free yes the human brains are programmed such a way that we only value those things for which we pay price for but there are enough elements and resources in the world which are invaluable and which cannot be attributed to any price tag and today i am going to talk about one such asset well when i use this word called asset you might be tempted to think that i am talking about the rich and the wealth but then the beauty here is this asset is equal to all of us it is the same that is available to the rich men in the world and to the poorest of the poor in the world this asset has got no favoritism no discrimination and nothing it is same for all irrespective of the ages and the genders too well if you want to understand what is that asset that i'm talking about and its importance talk to the patient who is on the hospital bed to whom the doctor has said that it is it talk to that employee who has missed that interview talk to that student who was not allowed into the examination hall because he was late by few minutes talk to that businessman who is rushing to catch that flight because he wouldn't like to miss that particular flight well i'm sure you understood by now what is the asset that i'm talking about the biggest and the greatest asset that god blessed us all with without any such discrimination is t i m e time we are here today to understand and discuss everything about this one word called time and effective management of time i am sure you agree with me that we are not here to live work and die we are here to leave a legacy let me reintroduce an old phrase that we are all familiar with the phrase goes like this take care of your minutes for the minutes will take care of your hours take care of your hours for they will take care of your days take care of your days they will take care of your months and of course months for they will take care of your years and listen to this very carefully now take care of your years for they will take care of your no not life but legacy yes i mean it my friends i'm sure you agree with me that we are not here to work live pay the bills and die we are here to leave a legacy yes a legacy that would inspire people a legacy that would give hope to the people around a legacy that would encourage the people around towards achieving the best in their lives what if i were to tell you that today is the last day in your life do you feel good about it do you feel satisfied accomplished do you say to yourself that well done i have run a good race i have done everything possible to the best of my abilities to this precious gift given by god called life and my life has turned into a legacy a legacy that would inspire generations to come or do you simply regret that you have wasted away this precious gift called time slash life that god has blessed you with one of the greatest kings of the ancient days used to pray lord teach me to number my days yes if you are considering and thinking about the words that i just spoke and if you are keen to turn your life into legacy then the next few minutes is for you where we shall discuss time and its effective management tools and techniques one of the best war strategies 
that every nation used to implement is to assess and identify the enemy and his strength. We are going to deploy the same war strategy now. For us to understand and effectively manage time, let us first identify the enemy of effective time management. Well, I know what you're thinking is right. The biggest enemy of effective time management is procrastination. Well, you might wonder that this word looks completely abstract, but let me simplify it for you. Procrastination is nothing but giving into that momentary temptation of postponing things, of pushing things to start at some other time and take pleasure momentarily and losing a lot in the long term. That is what procrastination is all about. And today, with the framework called FAULT, we are going to understand different reasons why we procrastinate things. And in the process, also identify what are the counterfeits for these procrastination points and then how we can come victorious using those counterfeit tools. Yes, the first one in this framework of fault is F. And F stands for fear of failure. Well, I know many of us don't start things because we are always worried about the results. We always think that something might go wrong. We always are worried that the results might not be to our expectations. Well, I understand. You know why most of us struggle this way? Because since childhood, we are not taught to handle failures. We are always taught to focus upon results and to focus upon the success of these results. But we are never taught to appreciate the enormous amounts of hard work that gets in getting the results. My friends, what I'm trying to tell you here is that the journey is equally important to the final destination. Now, why did I make this statement? There is a reason why I made this statement. Let me refer to the words of the greatest scientist who ever existed on the earth, Thomas Alva Edison, who invented bulb. Do you know that he failed 10,000 times before inventing that electric bulb? But you know what he says? He never admits them as failures, but he always looks at that learning curve. He always looks at the journey and says that every time I failed, I came closer towards making that electric bulb. The 10,000 times of my failures taught me 10,000 different ways of how an electric bulb doesn't work. What is your reason now, my friend? Why are you stuck there? Are you worried about failure? Let me tell you, take it for granted that you are bound to fail. But then failure is always a learning. Failure is always an experience which will take us one step closer towards success. Now with this, I'm sure next time you will never procrastinate things for a simple reason because you are afraid of failures, but you would embrace that and move forward taking every failure that comes in your way as a stepping stone towards success. The second one in this framework is you, which stands for uncertainty of where to begin. Yes, with a lot of things at hand, we often are overwhelmed by the tasks and then we fail to start anything at all. Or we fail to understand where to begin with. Well, my friends, the biggest secret to overcome this hurdle is this. Just do it. Understand the tasks that you have at your hand. Identify the low-hanging fruits and start doing them. Whatever things are running in your mind, start ticking them away and finish them off so that you'll have bigger bandwidth for bigger things. Whenever you are in doubt of where to start, the answer is the Nike's statement, just do it. The third one in this framework, L, stands for low tolerance for errors. Well, to explain this point, I would like to reflect upon my own experience. 
Like most of us, I was also fascinated about automobiles. I was also fascinated about bikes and cars since childhood. And I always dreamed that I would join an automobile company and design bikes. Well, by God's grace, the dream has come true. In the year 2010, when I just finished my bachelor's and master's from IIT Madras with specialization in automotive engineering, I joined this wonderful company called TVS Motor Company as senior design engineer. So as a senior design engineer, I am responsible for the design and development of the complete vehicle frame, the layout and the bike. Fresh from college, with a lot of thoughts and ideas, I was giving the best at my work and I was enjoying it. And during the progress of the project, we were at an important juncture. And this review is very important because post this particular review, all the jigs and fixtures for this project would be frozen, which means a lot of capital investment by the organization. Now we are in middle of that review. The drawings and the designs are being reviewed by the committee. And one of the committee members identified few errors in the drawings that I have submitted. I was completely devastated. I was upset. I thought the months of hard work that I have put in, in designing, in analyzing, in benchmarking the existing products in the market and the attempt to build one of the best products in the market was all in vain with that just one statement that there are errors in the drawings. While I was down, I could feel a pat on my back. Well, that was my manager. He came, he patted on my shoulder, looked at the steering committee and the audience, and he made these statements, which left remarkable, I would say, influence in my thought process from there on. He said, yes, mistakes do happen. Only human beings will commit mistakes, but not the machines. But he also said, only human beings have the capability to correct those mistakes and bring solutions, but not the machines. Well, that changed my perspective completely, my friends. Since then, even to this day, even if somebody in my team makes mistake, I always remember those words of wisdom that yes, human beings make mistakes and human beings alone have the capability to correct and to build solutions. So why I made this statement right now is most of the times, one of the reasons for delaying and procrastinating things is low tolerance for errors. Yes, when we develop tolerance towards errors and when we come to terms and come in agreement that errors do happen, but those can always be corrected, then we will move forward without procrastinating towards completion of tasks. With that words of encouragement given by my manager, I went back to my drawing room with those drawings and designs and I redesigned the whole thing such a way that the same frame can be used for a 110cc and a 150cc engine vehicles, thus reducing the investment cost to my organization by more than 20%. Well. Now, the most important thing in this framework, the fourth L, is lack of self-confidence or self-negative talks. Yes, one of the main reasons for procrastination is also the lack of self-confidence. When a spectacular task is at our hand, it is common to be overwhelmed by the very thought of it, and it is also common to get into that cocoon and procrastinate things that I do not have enough strength or capabilities or skills to accomplish the task. But my friends, let me remind you, we were all born as infants and grew up in life. How many times you fell down while learning to drive a cycle? How many times you attempted to solve that particular mathematical problem and you finally solved it? What I'm trying to communicate here is skills can always be built. All it needs is focus and efforts. And when you're ready to invest both of them and upskill yourself, you 
will definitely overcome this lack of self-confidence. But you would start embracing those challenges and you would start solving those problems with a lot of confidence and thus avoid what is called procrastination. Well, let me also give you a small capsule that will help you overcome this disease called lack of self-confidence. You know how you can achieve that confidence and overcome this? By upskilling. By investing time in upskilling yourself. And at this point of time, I would like to tell you a small story to drive this point deep into your hearts. Like as usual, in a small village, there lived two farmers, Anil and Sunil. Since that particular year, there was a lot of drought and no rains, there was no farming happening in that village. But well, the work has to move on for them to not stay hungry. And so, Sunil and Anil, they always used to go to the nearby forest, cut the firewood from the trees there, and sell the same in the village. This way, they were able to make a decent money and ensure that their needs are met. But while Sunil and Anil would go to the forest, there would be something strange that would happen every day. Sunil starts cutting from the day, from the time he enters the forest until the late evening. Whereas Anil basically disappears from morning to the midday and he only cuts from midday till the end of the day. But by the time both these friends together come to the village, they notice that Sunil has got two piles of wood, whereas Anil generally ends up with four piles of wood, making two times the money which Sunil makes. Sunil would notice this every day. And one day, unable to reason out and unable to understand the secret behind Anil's success, Sunil goes to him and asks him this question. Hey Anil, we both enter the forest the same time, but I would be cutting the trees from morning till the evening, while I would only be able to compile two piles of wood, whereas you are nowhere to be seen until the midday. You would only work for those five, six hours from midday to the evening, but then your results are two times that of mine. What is the secret and how is it possible? Well, Anil smiles at Sunil, puts his arm around him, takes him to a nearby lake. And then this is what Anil shows to Sunil. Anil shows him a stone, which is the banks of the lake. And he would tell him that how every day in the morning, he comes to that particular stone and does one spectacular thing. You know what? He sharpens his axes. He spends the majority of time in sharpening the axes so that when he starts to cut the trees, the huge trees would collapse with few strokes from Anil. Well, I'm sure you are able to connect with this story. This is what called as upskilling, my friends. How many hours are you investing? How many days are you investing in yourself in sharpening your skills, in honing your skills, in learning something new? Well, if you are not doing that until now, it's time you start doing it. Invest time in yourself, in reskilling and upskilling, and that will help you to gain confidence and thus overcome this lack of self-confidence and thus kill that reason called procrastination, which is affecting your time management. The last, but the most important word in this framework, T stands for temptation to be Mr. Perfect. While it is a great idea to invest efforts and time for astounding and quality results, but sometimes it is also a great trap that kills the speed of execution. Let me tell you, my friends, there can be never a thing called 100% perfect. 
even in the most perfect completed product there are possibilities of imperfections to creep in example look at one of the best innovative companies called apple every year they come up with revised products and better products it doesn't mean that their old products are improper or imperfect it is just that the perfection gets better year on year understand this things can never be 100% perfect we need to acknowledge and accept this always remember an imperfect plan executed is 1000 times better than a perfect plan unexecuted well you have seen uh, the main reason uh, for non effective or ineffective time management is procrastination right and we also saw different ways of why do we procrastinate and we kind of also understood how we can overcome them right but now let me not just leave you here but let me take you through a practical framework right which is given by stephen covey on uh, through his book called the seven habits of highly effective people in which he has given a 24 hour tracking chart and you'll be surprised to see how this 24 hour tracking chart will help you make the time management more effective yes now look at this wonderful framework which stephen covey has given to us here if you see you have on x axis urgency and non urgency and on y axis we have important and not important if you combine both of them together you have four quadrants the quadrant 1 is tasks which are important and urgent quadrant 2 the tasks which are important but not urgent quadrant 3 which are not important but urgent quadrant 4 which are not important and not urgent now let us see how this quadrant looks like and to get certain examples of each of these quadrants quadrant 1 that is important urgent things are generally your project deadlines your assignment deadlines all these things come into this quadrant and important but not so urgent that we have already seen skill development studies certification etc those are important but not necessarily urgent to be completed right now and then the third one is not important but urgent are maybe attending certain phone calls or responding to certain messages etc and neither important not urgent are in general your facebook notifications your whatsapp notifications and your emails right well the quadrant now looks like this but let us see how the quadrant looks in each of our lives if we do not plan things correctly planning to fail is failing to plan i am sure we are all aware of it and we acknowledge that now if at all we fail to plan our day to day activities this is how the quadrant looks like the third quadrant which is not important but urgent takes up the complete space and things which are important but they should have been supposed to be handled when those are not urgent space they also come into the urgent space and then you see the quadrant 4 the things which are not important and not urgent also try to sneak in into the charter and what is the result of it of course ineffective time management you are at the mercy of time you are at the mercy of tasks you are at the mercy of that urgency which will not allow you to do things effectively and efficiently well then you might ask what is the ideal composition of this matrix well this is how it is your quadrant 2 should take majority of your time yes you know how that happens this happens when you are able to identify in advance what your important tasks are even before those tasks convert into the quadrant of urgency when you are able to identify these important tasks when they are still in a non urgent quadrant you will be able to invest qualitative efforts and quantitative time in it so that the results are astounding example your skill development your studies your projects that you are supposed to complete the deadlines that are approaching all these things should fall under this quadrant 2 and ideally your quadrant 2 should take the lion's share followed by the quadrant 1 
Well, I agree that how much ever we plan, it is possible that certain ad hoc activities and certain uncertain and unexpected activities still fall into our bucket list. We'll, we, we cannot definitely avoid them. But since you have already planned your important and not so urgent quadrant already, you will have enough bandwidth to accommodate those important things which have come into your uh, room without any notice. So your quadrant one should take priority two. That means you should be able to handle your important and your urgent tasks. Yes. So now that we have seen quadrant two and quadrant one, and then the next quadrant that we need to focus is quadrant three. What is this quadrant three? This quadrant three is not important, but urgent tasks. So I completely understand that if in case, even if the planning for quadrant one and quadrant two are watertight, but still it is possible that there are certain leakages and things might still fall into the urgent quadrant. Nevertheless, since you have invested majority of time in planning and executing quadrant one and quadrant two, the quadrant three's size automatically comes down. And this is where you focus on urgent but not so important tasks. Now, what are we left with? Of course, we are left with no time and we have left with no time for quadrant four. What is that quadrant four? Not so important, not so urgent. So this way, when we are able to place the tasks or the lists, either in our day or in our month or in our quarter or in our year, right? With our goals specifically written and placed in these quadrants rightly, I'm sure we will be able to effectively manage time and bring astounding results. Well, I know you are excited now because either you would not have come across this particular quadrant's uh, matrix so far or even if you had come across this in the past, this would have had or this would have been making more sense to you right now. Well, I will not leave you here. I will take you further deeper into the effective time management techniques. Well, you might say now that, hey, you know what? It's all great. It's all fantastic. It's all superb, but I don't have time. I don't even have time to make this particular quadrant. Forget about following that quadrant. Or you might always say that, hey, I have so many things in my mind to do, but it looks like I always run out of time. Or you can always say that, hey, you know what? My task list is so long, but end of the day, I end up doing nothing. Well, I know that you are able to connect with either all of the statements or some of the statements that I just made right now. But at this point of time, I'm going to reveal something very interesting to you that will kind of open up your eyes. Are you ready for it? Look at this. This is the weekly estimate that I have built for you to understand more in detail on what points we have just discussed. Overall in a week, we have 168 hours. On an average, as we sleep between six to eight hours a day, probably I have allocated 49 hours for sleeping. And then we have daily tasks such as brushing, right? And then uh, uh, getting ready to the work, food and everything, all put together roughly two and a half hours a day, which comes to 17.5 hours. If there are students here, probably I've taken your classes. And if there are people who are working, your commuting and your work together, I've taken it to be around 50 hours per week. And then the other reading activities or other miscellaneous activities is roughly how it looks like. Now, when you sum up all of these and subtract this from the 168 hours, you know what you're left with? You are left with almost two days of time. Well, I know. I know that this is both revealing and surprising to you, but this is how it is. This is the reality. Even if you were to put in certain numbers, which I would have missed to put it for you, I'm sure you will be left with at least more than 24 hours a day at your disposal to do whatever you want. So my friends, it is a myth when people say that I'm busy. It is not that they are busy, but it is that they are not able to effectively manage their time. Well, you have seen multiple things in effective time management so far, but we are not done yet. This experiment, when I have seen for the first time, 
I was really baffled and I was shocked to what insights it has given me to learn. And I'm here to pass on the same understanding, to pass on the same learnings to you also. This is very, very important to some of us who would always say that, you know what, God gave only 24 hours in a day and probably I need a day of 48 hours. There are so many things in my to-do list and I don't get to finish even 60 to 70% of them. How do I manage all of them? All right? This is very, very, very relevant to those who have these questions. Right? Now, watch this very carefully. Look at this jar. Let me tell you that this jar resembles to the time frame that we have. You can consider this to be a 24 hour time frame or a week's time frame, a month's time frame or a lifetime. Yeah, you see this jar? Yes. Now, let me start filling this jar with the items that I have. I'm starting with sand. Yes. I have filled this jar with the sand and it is half filled. Let me continue to fill this jar with some pebbles that I have. I, I know the jar is overflowing. Let me still try. Okay, take a closer look at this jar. It is half filled with sand and then I have attempted to fill with some pebbles and stones. Probably I will try to push them. No, that's it. It's full. Most often, this is what happens when we do not plan our activities and we do not prioritize our activities. Well, you might ask me, how do we plan or prioritize? Well, hold on for a second before I empty this jar and come back to you on what is the right way of filling this jar. Well, at this time, I would like to introduce one more principle to you, which is called Pareto principle or also called as 2080 rule. Now, what does this mean? This rule means that you will have basically 20% of things, if at all you focus upon them, gives you 80% of your results. Well, if you are into business, I am sure you can easily relate with this. Among your customer base, it is always those 20% of those customers who give you business of 80% of your targets. Not just to the businessman. Well, students, I am coming to you. I know, when you prepare for your exams, how do you do it? Without your knowledge, you kind of apply Pareto's principle. What do you do it? You identify those things which are called as important questions or important topics and you spend time on them. What does it mean? Those 20% of important questions or topics will help you score 80% of marks easily. Now we are going to apply the same Pareto principle in our effective time management. Now if you look at our lives and our activities there are 20% of areas which will kind of define our life. What are they? Probably our profession 
our studies, our work, our business, our immediate family, right? Wife, children, parents, etc. Our relatives and friends and well-wishers and the complete social connect. Probably the time we might have to invest in upskilling and reskilling ourselves. And yes, of course, we all need time to relax. We all need time to have fun. We all need time to uh, pamper ourselves. Now, these five resemble those 20% of activities which define our life and which decide whether our life would remain as a life or a legacy. Now, this is the same case with your to-do list also. In your days tracker or in your weeks tracker, identify those points if completed will close 80% of your tasks and will release your bandwidth, right, almost 80%. Identify them and focus on them. This is also, while I relate it to the quadrant, these are basically the important tasks put together, which are both urgent as well as not so urgent, right? And now I am placing these important tasks into my life as my priority list. Great. So what's in it? Here in it are my studies, my profession, my family, my friends, my relatives, and my hobby, my passion, and everything that I hold dear to myself. And now there are, of course, other important and urgent, other not so important but urgent activities that are there in our lives and let me fill my life or jar with these other pebbles. Well, the jar looks almost full. Okay. Now, I still have space for a few more activities to fill in this jar and let me attempt to fill the jar with this. Well, let me shake it here and there and ensure that it all settles down well. Have you noticed something? When my order was not right in the previous experiment, I had pebbles falling out of the jar. Now the same number of pebbles and then the same amount of sand, I still feel there is some space let me pick up some of the sand and start filling this jar. Yeah. The jar or our lives seems to be completely filled. Look, I have emptied all the pebbles. I have emptied one full bowl of sand and I've also taken some sand from the other bowl and I still see some layer 
to be accommodated. It is the same jar which we have started with in our first experiment. The number of stones are same. The quantity of sand is also same. But what was the difference? The difference was in the order of accomplishing. The difference was in the prioritization of things. Well, this is very, very true, my friends. Failing to plan is synonymous with planning to fail. If you do not prioritize, if you do not list down the activities, if you do not focus on things that desire and demand your focus, you are left at the mercy of time and tasks and you will not be able to achieve much. And the life always appears to be overwhelming. But when you prioritize things rightly and when you focus on things which demand and deserve your focus, this is how fulfilling your life and time looks like. With the same given time, you will be able to accomplish much more.